Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I want to do real quick, first and foremost, there were a couple more shout-outs. I want to kind of get, get through those. Uh-huh. Um, we will start with, I'm pretty sure he's still listening, um, our station manager, the guy who runs Bootleg. Uh, his oh, name is uh, Rihan. Yes, the boss. And he yes. specifically Han. requested a shout-out. <laughs> Mm-mm. Hi, Brihan. What up? <laughs> and then um, this one science more. fiction, Brihan. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is, um, oh yeah, he's like the old man, and that's who Brihan uh-huh. is. Is the old man you mentioned in the bumper? Ah, uh-huh. the old um, man. Greater <laughs> people. God, I love that. Uh, me too. Um, and then um, we also have uh, Koaku. Koaku. Wow. It was a very pretty Sounds lady. Like- Kwaku sounds like an interesting character. What's what's Kwaku's story, man? Um, I don't know. I'll ask her. Kwaku, tell us your oh. story, and I'll I'll Kawako, tell it to him. Kwaku, a woman, a woman of mystery. I like oh, that. no, no, no. Apparently, Amber it means in Amber Japanese. in Japanese, and her name oh. is Amber, so it works. <laughs> oh. I say, "Come on, don't matter, Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wish well, I could do that. It's, it's all the Japanese I know. I don't know what I did. I might have just ordered the uh, the chef's hat. But <laughs> so there's an interesting story I just I saw uh, yesterday, and yeah. it was involving StarCraft II. Yep. Um, it was basically an old news article that was talking about mm-hmm. the fact that apparently Blizzard had pegged someone else to mm-hmm. be the mm. mighty Jim Rayner. Wow. Wow. Obviously, that didn't happen. Yeah, you know that guy is uh, whoever that guy is. Um, they're still searching for the body. Well, that's all I could say. <laughs> now, you know, listen. Um, when I originally did S- StarCraft, was back in goodness ninety eight, I guess. So it was over ten years from when the uh, original one was was made to when the uh, this first sequel was released, and. Um, a lot changed in in those ten years. Uh, Blizzard obviously grew up as a company. You know the budgets went went crazy. The uh, the game obviously became this huge international hit with millions of fans all over. And um, you know it's it's not like I was talking to Chris Metzen every other week over those ten years. I mean it was essentially a job that you did. And then you kind of kind of move on as an actor, and um, you know every once in a while you'd hear a little little buzz that people were fans, and I go, oh, that's interesting. But you know, I was kind of clueless as to how popular video games or that particular video game was anyway. And um, then the word came out that uh, they were going to be doing a sequel. So of course I start thinking, well, I wonder if they're going to bring me back. And um, they had actually. I don't know if they hired another actor or used another actor who was doing um, what we call temp tracks for them, where you know they'd hire somebody to come in and just record some dialogue as that particular character. Generally, it's so they can get a sense of how the story is going, or maybe they'll give give that to the uh, the animators so they can kind of put something together to kind of see how it's how it's going. It's not a final, but it's something that they're playing with, and apparently they. Um, like anything, familiarity, uh, you know, instead of breeding contempt, bred comfortability with, with this character. They thought, oh, you know, we, we kind of like this guy. But at the same point, the uh, the budget got so huge and the game got so big that Blizzard decided to go out into the world and see who was out there. You know, they had the budget. They could afford to get essentially anybody that they would want to play the different characters in the game. And so they went out and did some open casting for uh, both my role and also the uh, the part of Sarah Kerrigan, who was originally done um, by uh, uh, I'm kind of, uh, uh, Glynis Talkin. Pardon me. Yes. I was going to say Gwyneth, but it's Glynis Talkin. And um, I auditioned for it. You know, I was just an actor. I thought, well, you know, come on, let's, let's told my agent, and they let me audition. I sent it over, and I was essentially told. Thank you, but no thank you. Now, You're, out of curiosity, did you just not sound enough like Jim Rayner? Because that's, no, that it, doesn't it, make any sense. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't that. I mean, there's, a, there's obviously a happy ending to the story. It was that they, you know, they they basically said, we used you 10 years ago, did a great job, but we're we're moving on. 
So as an actor, you go, well, that's that. And yeah. then, I, then there started to be some buzz on the internet about Glynis and I not coming back. And there started to be an online petition to bring us back, and the fans started getting involved because, you know, they obviously were, uh, were very comfortable with, with our portrayals of the roles. And Blizzard, you know, it, what's interesting is they, they, were, they were reading celebrity stars for, uh, for the part of Jim Rayner, and they would keep sending out uh, specs to all the agents, both in Los Angeles, New York, around the country, we still haven't found Jim Rayner yet. We're, you know, resubmit. Don't send us the same guys. And my agent would always send me in. She'd say, "You're the only one I'm I'm sending back in as a as an uh, as an audition, even though they've already told you no. I'm resubmitting you." Finally, I get a call, and they said, "We want you to come in for a callback." I went, "Okay." So I went down to a uh, recording studio here in Los Angeles, and Chris Metzen was there, and all the execs at Blizzard, and Andre Romano was there, who's the uh, the voice director, who is the literally the top voice director, animation voice director in uh, probably the country. I mean, she I think wow. she's won seven seven Emmys. Uh, she has all the Warner Brothers cartoons. I mean, she's she's working on World of Warcraft. She's been she directed StarCraft, obviously. Um, and I worked with with her and with the people from Blizzard for about half an hour, just doing Rainer stuff. And um, at at that time, you know, I said thank you very much. We'll we'll let you know. And and I thought, well, you know, I got my shot. All I really wanted was to go in there and do my thing. And I thought that over the ten years, I thought that I, I'd matured as an actor. I was a better performer. I thought my voice was was probably more. Sp- fitting for the for the character and the experiences that he was going with or going or, or going through and uh you know damned if i if i didn't get the call about two weeks later that i was cast and when i talked to chris about it afterwards he said we needed to go out there to explore everything that was um that was available to us and then when you came into the room and you started doing rainer we realized that rainer just walked into the room that he was here now. So we needed to take that long journey to realize that we had it the entire time. Home was where we needed to be. So it was, a, it was an exploration for them. And actually, I'm honored that they, that they did that because it wasn't like some kind of pressure that they had to use me, so they did it even though they, they didn't want to. No, I got the job fair and square. I went in, I auditioned, and I beat out the other people and, you know, here I am. So it, it was a, a very happy, happy story for me. They did end up hiring Trish Helfer for, um, for Sarah Kerrigan. I'm sure you guys know who, who Trish is. She uh, was, the, I guess, the, the head Cylon on uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica for, for years. Yeah. Um, and she, I mean, she's a phenomenal actress and you know, quite, quite stunning to, to look at. So it's not, not rough being in a, in a recording session with her by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> oh, I'm I don't sure, really I'm have sure to, you had to try. Um, yeah. I, I don't really have to have to work too hard as an actor to, uh, to, to go to that place where Rainer's attracted to her. Cause you go, okay, yeah, this works. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go with this. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, we're going to get a, a phone call with her wanting to come on going. So, um, <laughs> She, 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 she's going to say just the opposite. Goes, goes, God, when I just first saw this guy walk in, I thought, man, I've really got to do some personalization to find something attractive because this guy is disgusting. <laughs> and wait, no. <laughs> first of all, please. Second of all, and then she heard the voice on top of it. There you go. There you <laughs> and go. went, oh, it's Jim Rayner. <laughs> she, she's, she's really good. She's a, she's a real sweetheart and a, a very hardworking, very 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 good actress and uh, i think they made a very good choice we're sorry to see glennis go, go but uh, i understand why they why they chose trish she's she's super so in talking about kind of switching gears back to the uh-huh. old republic there's obviously not much you can talk about there um yeah was was it i mean uh, you know, we, you did say you don't really play. You do kind of a uh, smattering of characters. You don't really play a mainstay character that we would experience. Yeah. Well, it's it's you know, and also in this game, it's hard to tell how big your character is because the character may have you know sixty pages of dialogue. Um, so you think, well, this is this is pretty 
pretty substantial, especially when you're a Jedi Knight or the, the, the Chancellor. I mean, how many Chancellors are there? And you know, but they say that, and also all the all the characters that they were giving me were very similar in their specs. It wasn't like okay, this this guy is you know is a teenager. This one's an eighty year old man. This guy's uh, you know uh, you know a, a weird alien. So give him a strange voice. It was all like roughly the same age range. And I, you know, I was telling the director, I said, man, I don't know if I can come up with you know twenty different characters that are all going to sound different he says don't worry this game is so huge there are so many characters there are so many stories that are going on a these characters are never going to interact with one another and by the time one character finishes whatever their story is and another character picks up so much time will have elapsed that no one will remember that it's the same it's the same guy doing the voice there you go that's, okay that's that's something that they've actually said uh like you said, you they haven't really given you much on the game, but obviously, you know, we're around a lot of fans that yeah. soak up every ounce of information, basically. Um, you hear a lot about World of Warcraft, people going up to the maximum level in the game in, you know, like two days or three days, just playing <laughs> nonstop. Yeah. Um, the max level of this game is level 50 to start, <laughs> and <laughs> apparently, well, that's that's not really high. Like, okay. Uh, okay. on a okay. comparison basis, World of Warcraft uh. is level 85 now. Okay, okay. Um, but it's level 50 to start, and apparently it's going to take 200 play hours wow. to, to get to that level. So as far as the mass of the game... Wow. It's, it's pretty huge. Yeah. It is pretty huge. I, I mean, think that's it, my first mission, is to figure <laughs> out... if I, it, See if I can figure out which ones are you, and list them. <laughs> okay. Well, I told you, Senator Evron is one, a chancellor. I, I, I should have saved the scripts. You know, that's one thing I, I, I never do, and I, I probably should, is, is save some of these scripts. Because, you know, once, you know, before the game is out, you, you, you can't give it to anybody. But after the game is out, it might be a nice little kotchke for, uh, for people to have a, a signature on or something or a copy oh, of something we actually Lord. recorded in the studio. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that would be... That would be framed and on my wall is where that would you know, be. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm so silly because this basically the stuff ends up going in the trash when we finish with it. Um, you know, <laughs> you, well, I'll tell you, you what. Know, Will you say there's going to be so Starcraft many dumpster script, divers script now? next time you go in? Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, see what I can do. See what, see what I can do for you. Find Ooh. something that's got, you know, something on it. You know, <laughs> it and it would be like, it would be like putting together a Rubik's Cube if you were trying to figure out what this particular scene had to do with anything. It's, yeah. it's you go, uh, okay, what's happening here? There's some uh, Somebody's being attacked? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't he, know what he, it means. He just exclaimed. <laughs> but it's, but it says Star hell. Wars Old Republic on it. That's, and I want it. It has a character's name. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> we They're salivate over Jedi. this stuff, man. We, we salivate over this stuff. Any, any oh, bit of that man. stuff, it's just See, it's this, a respect. This is, I'm, I'm learning this. this is, I'm learning this. <laughs> so, uh, okay. you know what, honestly, what you, what you could do, and this is uh -huh. you know, theoretical, you could save these things, sign them, and then put them up as charity auctions. That's what a lot of people do. I mean, that's that's and that's a very very good good thing. It's you know have something like that, um, you know that go, goes to a goes to a good cause, or you know just something for for the fans to to enjoy. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to make a make a buck off of it. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. Exactly. But yeah. it's it, you know there are people that that like like you say that that would really honor something like this would put it into a frame and say man this is really kind of kind of cool and when that particular scene in the game pops up they go hey look there it is um this is the original that's, script that's that's, that's kind of cool that's you know <laughs> well they um I, I mean i think that for for example like when i when i mentioned the charity thing the thing that popped oh, hold on hold on a second was... george lucas just walked in what is it george <laughs> oh uh, he said i can't do it sorry oh. said, <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry um, yeah. I was I was thinking about the fact that um, I don't know if you've heard this, but apparently it's huge news. Uh, they mm -hmm. they did the pre-orders today for Star Wars: The mm -hmm. Old Republic, mm -hmm. and they sold out on EA's client in about three hours. Oh my goodness! Um, you say and how, that how many a, units? <laughs> I don't remember what the unit count was. I don't know if oh they've goodness. announced it, um, but it was at a hundred and fifty dollars a piece. Wow. And they sold out, and they're selling out across the wow. board. They're selling out at retailers. They're selling out everywhere. 
Wow. I mean, I've seen little bits and pieces at um, 